it's something that we both are enjoying. Like he's getting the most fulfillment out of watching me being pleasured. Okay. Welcome back to Other People's Lives. I'm Joe Sanigato. I'm Greg Dybeck. For anyone out there that would like to be a guest on our show, don't hesitate to reach out. You can reach us at our email, oplpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and today we are speaking with someone who sent us an email, super captivating subject line. It read, I have sex with other men for my husband's pleasure. And if you want to know how to get our attention, it's typically with emails like that. (laughs) So uh, immediately want to speak to this guest and we've got her on the line. So thanks so much for being on. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So uh, crazy subject line. And then in the email, your first sentence is my husband and I have a stag and vixen dynamic. So can you explain what that is exactly? And I guess why you're having sex with other men for your husband's pleasure? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so a stag is he's like a dominant male and they like encourage their partners to have sexual encounters either in their presence or not in their presence and then a vixen is also like another term i guess that can be used for vixen is a hot wife and i feel like that one's a little bit more commonly known than a vixen but a vixen's more of like the submissive woman that is the one having the extramarital sex and um, with her dominant support and encouragement. Um, it's for really for both of their pleasure, but the big difference, uh, a lot of people do want to confuse it with cuck holding, but a cuck is typically a submissive that likes to be like degraded or humiliated in a certain way. Right. That's kind of the opposite of ours. Like ours is more of an experience with each other and, It's something that we both are enjoying. Like he's getting the most fulfillment out of watching me being pleasured. Okay. And uh, I guess from your point of view, why? Because with, I mean, you guys are essentially like the bare bones of it is they're similar, but it's just like the intention, I guess, is different. So like, what is it for you specifically that is... Uh, submissive because usually in like cuck holding you I guess you would be the more dominant person if that was what's happening but in this one you're the submissive so what about that like what's the intention like is it that you are just listening to his orders or something so uh, some people's dynamics is that way that's not how ours is ours is very mutual um I don't even necessarily like using the word of me being a submissive because I'm just I'm a pretty like independent and like up front person I'm really blunt and I don't have any issue with telling people how I feel um so it's more just because like I guess I'm the one that's the center of attention that I'm kind of the one that's being I don't know it sounds weird but used like I'm the one that's being used in the situation that's yeah right. it's it's interesting because like Joe said it's like it's almost like the same logistics but I guess like the intention, the way it's being perceived, the pleasure factor. And I guess what's interesting to hear, and maybe this is just like, I don't know, like a closed minded or like toxic masculinity, like perspective of this. But I imagine a lot of people thinking right now, like this stag dynamic, like if that's dominant, how, like, how is that dominant if he's letting his wife sleep with, you know, another man on purpose? So I think it has a lot to do with being just really confident in yourself. Like he's so confident in himself that he is okay with it happening. And not only okay, like he does encourage it because he's just supportive. And it really, like a lot of people look at dominance and submissive in different variations, right? So his big variation, I guess, on his dominance is that He's just like the protector. He's the one that like makes sure things go the way that they're supposed to go and that I'm safe. And that's kind of his role when it comes to being dominant. And that's kind of the best, not, well, yeah. One of the best things about us exploring this dynamic is I never feel pressured into anything 
I always am the one that has the say of yes or no. And he's always there as like my safety net. Like he knows my cues. He knows if I'm like, I don't like this, this hurts, or I feel uncomfortable. And he's the one that will be like, we're done. We're, we don't want to do it anymore type thing. Uh, and who chooses uh, these men? Is it him or is it you? So we kind of have like a list that needs like checked off, like just our preferences basically. And then um, he's the one that really like screens a majority of the people because I get insanely annoyed. <laughs> and so he'll pick like, you know, a few people and then ask what my opinion is of them. And then we just kind of take it from there. So we definitely both have a say in the matter. Where do you find these people? Is there an app or a website or are you like walking into coffee shops and talking to strangers? Oh, I'm not that brave. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so a little little spinoff of it is um, we kind of started this journey when we decided, well, I decided to get a little bit into like the sex work industry and we didn't know where we wanted to take that Um because we wanted to make sure he was being like involved so people didn't think that I was just out being a giant whore. And so we just <laughs> kind of fell into, we found this dynamic. And so with it being that dynamic and being a little bit into the sex work industry, we are able to find other like professionals, which makes it a lot better because then there's no like emotional connection. It's more like professional and everybody's just getting pleasure out of it. And it's, um, a lot of enjoying the moment. Got it. So, and like, how do you, how did you guys kind kind of, uh, start exploring this? Like, were you kind of like, you know, I'm, or were you both kind of like, uh, open to the idea of having sort of like an open relationship and it sort of blossom into this, or is this something that you communicated from the beginning? Um, so kind of both. Um, so we actually kind of started this journey about like seven years ago. We did a, um, a swinging thing like two or three times and I mean I feel like a lot of people know what that means but in case they don't there's like soft swap or full swap and you're usually in the same room some people aren't and it's like another couple that you're playing with some of them are bi couples some of them aren't uh it just depends on like your preferences and we started with that and then we ended up having a kid together and then my confidence was just shot because you know new moms hate their bodies super fun and then my life really was awful in uh, 21. 21 was just a really, really rough year for me. And right around my birthday, I was just like, I need something to be different. Like, I need to feel good about myself. What if we started like an OnlyFans page? And he was like, if that's what it's going to give you confidence, like, let's do it. And like I said, that's kind of where we were like, where do we want to go with this? And we kind of brought back the swinging thing. And then we brought back, maybe we need to have an open relationship. And I full panicked because I can't mm. deal with him being with another girl. Like it freaks me out. Um, well, that answers one question I had coming up, which is, <laughs> does this kind of expand into an open relationship? But it's not. It's just this dynamic of you sleeping with other men. Correct. Correct. Um, and then it ties into my husband has this fetish. Um, he is really attracted towards male genitalia and doesn't necessarily find anything about a man attractive. He just enjoys the feeling of a dick. And so he kind of got this like uh, enjoying the aesthetic of looking at all these <laughs> dicks. And then he's like, I want that in my wife. And he so, expressed this to me, and that's where we went with it. Yeah. And listeners, <coughs> maybe an alarm is going off because they're like, wait, I think I've heard about this before. And back in 2021, we did an episode called I'm a Straight Man with a Penis Fetish, where we went over this, how the man we spoke to was married. He was straight, not attracted to men, but just obsessed and attracted to penises specifically and you dropped a bomb on us before we started recording do you want to let it let the listeners know yeah that's my husband <laughs> <laughs> so it's a family affair here on opl but uh that's fascinating that's i don't think that's ever happened before um but yeah just that's cool that we got like now we know his perspective in depth and now can you know kind of understand i guess what 
he was talking about when he, I guess, brought this up to you. Um, but I am curious, like, how did he bring this up to you exactly? And do you remember your initial reaction when he was like, hey, I like, I like penises. Like, I don't want penises, but like, I like penises. Or I kind of want penises. I don't know. We had talked about it a little bit in the past. Like, his fetish was never like a secret to me. I like knew about him messing around with men in our small ass town. And I like confronted him about it. And he denied it for a while. And then I was like, just stop. Like, just tell me. And he finally told me. And so... I knew about it from the get go. And when we were getting into our like swinging adventure years ago, we were actually looking for bi couples because as he mentioned about a hundred freaking times in your guys' episode, because he's very repetitive, we both are, well, I'm definitely bi and he's more, I guess, like sexually bi. As I know that doesn't totally make sense, but I feel like, I don't know, once you understand, you understand. And... So we were always looking for bi couples and it just wasn't something that happened. And when we were again trying to discuss like what we were going to do for content, he just straight up was like, I want to see you with another guy. And I didn't even hesitate. I was just like, okay, cool. Let's, let's do that. Wow. Yeah. So it's just like that, like a little match made in heaven, it seems. (laughs) Yeah, like, uh, I definitely found my person. Like, he, I don't think I could have this with anybody else. Yeah, I was going to say, like, this is quite the, like, like, you have to have, like, complete, like, confidence and trust and open conversation and communication with your partner to, like, get to this point. Oh, for sure. To be like, yeah, let's start swinging. Let's start doing this. You have sex with a guy, by the way. I'm not gay, but I I fucking love penises. (laughs) The yep. art, the aesthetic of a penis, or however we're describing it. But uh, one, I guess, my que- another question that I had was, uh, you know, you had said that you have this like stance where you don't want to see him with another woman. Cause is that like subject to change? Like, does he does he ever still want to do that, um, or is that something you just like wouldn't allow or be cool with? Oh no, that's a great question. Um, we've had a lot of conversations about it. We actually even do couples counseling, not because there's any issues, but just to always make sure we are on the same page and make sure that we are communicating properly and as honestly as possible. And that's been brought up a few times because I have this fear that he's going to one day be like, so I've let you be doing this for a while. It's my turn. And that makes me instantly panic. Um, it, uh, even right now, like I'm getting choked up because I can't find the words because it does stress me out. But he has reassured me that he's totally fine and happy and more than happy with what we're doing right now. And if it ever does come to a point where I feel comfortable doing that, then I get to bring it up on my own terms. He's not going to push me into it. Got it. But you, but you, the idea of him being with another woman would just like set you off. It's me and you. Yeah. And it's me being selfish. It truly is. Um, Where he gets off on seeing me pleasured by other people that I don't want him pleasured by anybody else. I'm like, no, that's my job. I don't want anybody else to do it. Got it. So if he were to ever say, I don't want to do this dynamic anymore. I don't want you pleasured by other men. Would it be hard for you to stop? Like, have you kind of grown accustomed to being able to be with different men or would you be able to just kind of cold turkey? It's just you and him from now on. I definitely think that I would maybe be upset about it for a minute because of all the benefits it really has provided us in our relationship. But I'm not attached to anything, so I could absolutely just be like, oh, this is fine. I guess dildos will work for now, you know? (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm curious, too, like, in one of these, I don't know, sessions, if you want to call it that, um, where's your head at? Like, are you so focused on your husband and knowing that this is giving him pleasure or... Does, does he just want you to be as involved with the other guy as possible? Like what's kind of just the, that dynamic and you know, what's, what's your headspace in these moments? Uh, so, I mean, each, we usually call them scenes. Sessions work though. Absolutely too. But when we do one of these, they're always a little bit different. Um, like I 
did mention like the whole content thing with it usually being recorded there is like an aspect of putting on a show so I almost like get to be put into this different um persona I guess and with being able to do that I feel like I get to be a lot more open and like free and a lot of it is like I make tons of eye contact with my husband like he'll hold my hand in certain parts like just so that we stay connected in fact his favorite shot <laughs> is when I give a blow job and have my hand with my wedding ring showing like he loves that Ooh, wow so it, it's definitely an experience with him like when I tell people I'm having sex with other men I'm also like in that same instance having sex with him too in a way Okay. Does he get involved and, physically at all? Yeah, I was going to no? ask, where is he in the room? What is he, what is he doing? So sometimes he does get involved and sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes it does turn into a little bit of a threesome situation, but sometimes it'll be just me and the other guy. And then at the end, he'll come in and like reclaim his property, if you will. How does he do that? Yeah. What's that? What's that mean? Well, he just gets all in there, guys. No, <laughs> Um, he just had sex with me, like right after, um, okay. even after like the man, other man coming to completion, like, and that's kind of another turn on for him. And that's, I think has a lot to do with his penis fetish as well. Hmm. Wait, what, what? Oh, so like, as soon as the guy comes, then he's like, I'm jumping right in right after. <laughs> Ab yeah, absolutely. Okay. Wow. Wow. You mentioned confidence earlier and, uh, yeah, your husband is is one confident man. He knows what he, he likes. Really <laughs> he doesn't know what he likes. I'm curious, you mentioned that you had a kid. Congratulations. Uh, how I'm just always curious how that factors in, I guess, you know, as sex workers being in this relationship that you're in. Um, is this something that you shield from your kid forever for a certain amount of time? And then, you know, kind of how do you go about, I guess, ever you know, discussing these things with your child. Yeah, for sure. So I did mention that I had a kid. So that's actually my third child. Um, I have two older children with a different guy, same guy, like, again, not out here being a total whore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but they are a little bit older. One is 14 and one is about to turn 12. So something I have noticed is like, looking at all these other creators that are have children all their children are young it seems to be with me having older ones i thought okay i have two options i can either let them find out from somebody else that is inevitably going to come across it or i could tell them myself and i chose to tell them myself and i thought that was a really good choice and they seemed like they were very under Standing, and I don't get into detail because I wanted to make what I was telling them as age appropriate as possible. And because a lot of it's personal, a lot of it's not their business. And with telling them, they, like I said, they seemed really approving it, as much as they could be. They also, of course, had some questions and I, I answered them as age appropriately as possible. But as my local town started to find out, it started to cause a lot of drama in my kids' lives. Oh, wow. What, what happened there? Uh, mostly like other kids finding my stuff and then showing my daughters and being like, your mom's a whore. And um, holy shit. Yeah, like it was bad. So keep in mind, my local town is like, 23,000 people like they should really just rename it high school because that's about how everyone acts and wow. so news travels fast and that was really tough and it ended up coming down to is I kind of had to just be like I'm not doing it anymore I kind of had to lie to them in fact I was told by their other set of parents that I needed to lie to them and tell them that I wasn't doing it anymore um so that's kind of where that ended up going my littlest one, I'm not, I don't know if I'm necessarily stressed about him because he doesn't have another set of parents that are also telling him negative things about me. Um, and I've gotten smarter since I've started about like finding ways to be more discreet and hiding more things so that it's not as public, I guess. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. What, I mean, what exactly wow. did you tell them? Like you were like, I, I make adult content. 
Like, yeah. What exactly? Oh, okay. That's pretty much exactly what I told them. I was like, yeah. Um, so I've always had super bad self-confidence and you guys, I know are pretty aware of that. I became a mom at a very young age. So I never got to explore that part of my life. I never got to explore the sexual side. I never got to have a hoe phase. And so, um, this is kind of me as an adult being smart about it and safe. Like I do make sure everybody that I come encounter with has been tested. I get tested regularly and those tests aren't cheap. So like, I definitely am like making sure going out of my way that we are making it as safe as possible. Mm -hmm. And I let them know that. And I also reminded them that I am an adult and I am allowed to make these choices. And that being an adult, that I, there's nothing necessarily wrong with it. And in fact, be, being open and free with yourself is a really nice thing and a really beautiful thing. And being able to be confident in yourself and feel good about what you're doing and making yourself feel good because let's all be real, sex feels good. And that's okay to say. <laughs> It does. It does. It does. You're right. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> totally. But your your kids are under the assumption that this isn't happening anymore. <clears throat> Correct. Got it. How long ago was this that this all happened, by the way? Oh, so that was about the conversation of me getting told that I needed to not to be more discreet and tell them that I wasn't doing it was probably about seven months ago. It was actually like a pretty traumatic experience, <laughs> but yeah, no, that's really, wasn't expecting to hear that. I'm sure that's hard to figure out exactly how to navigate that once that happens. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I thought I had two options and I, maybe I didn't choose the right one. I do. I like, I know what the downfall was of the town finding out. I decided to start a Snapchat and I turned the quick ad on and the location on. And I would just add everyone and then they would have to pay me to get to the like really good stuff. But with it being that way, you can't really know who's you're adding. Okay. And so I had a bunch of people on there that shouldn't have been on there. And that's how that got really out of hand. And I own that mistake like that. I shouldn't have done that. And like I've told them, like, I know the consequences of what I'm doing. And that is a consequence that I have to face, that I made that choice and it did not bode well for me. Wow. Do, wow. Did it change your relationship with them at all, do you think? Or do you think now you're at a place where they really do understand and you were kind of able to, I guess, teach them, you know, those lessons about being yourself and kind of owning it? So it's kind of iffy. One of my daughters, the older one, she definitely, I think, understands it. I think she's embarrassed, as I totally understand that, like, uh, her friends have seen me naked. Like, that is a little embarrassing for a child to go through. And so I think she understands and accepts it as much as she can, but of course holds some feelings for it. And I can't hold those feelings against her. Like, she's entitled to feel the way she wants to feel. And I have apologized for her if it did cause her any hurt or harm. It was never my intention. And that that wasn't something I really considered when I started getting right into it. And with not considering that, that's my bad. So if I created any disconnect because of that, again, that's a consequence that I have to deal with. My mm -hmm. younger daughter, she uh, was fed by her other parents, just like how disgusting I was, how embarrassing it is to be associated with me, just kind of throwing so much hate and negative comments towards it and also twisting what it is. It kind of turned into the cup holding thing where it was like, well, it's because her husband can't please her. And mm. so she found me pretty repulsive for a while. And I kind of had to tell her, like, look, you can feel the way you want to feel, but I am not going to apologize for the actions that I've done. I apologize if it's caused you harm or hurt, but I have to own what I've done. And you don't you're not old enough or mature enough to grasp the benefits that have actually happened from this. You're only seeing one side of it. And I think after I had that conversation, she seemed to understand it a lot more. 
And now that they don't think that anything's going on, it hasn't seemed to be an issue. Okay. Wow. Such a, so wild dynamic to have to deal with. Um, it is that, yeah, no, seriously. So, wow. I guess going forward then, um, you and your husband just plan to continue this as long as possible, it seems. And, um, I guess my last question too, like, do you ever plan to, I like to truly own it again with your kids and not have to be discreet about it and not have to, you know, kind of feel like you're living a double life? Uh, yeah, I do. I think once they're older and that they're mature enough to grasp what's going on, then, um, I would be very willing to have an open conversation with them. In fact, if one of them came across it or one of their friends made another comment, I've told like, they are welcome to come talk to me whenever they want. I'm a pretty open book. If you have questions, like I am willing to answer them because I would rather answer your questions than you assume something else. Mm -hmm. And so I am absolutely planning on and intending to have that conversation with them when they're older. Uh, Cause I don't necessarily see it being something that we're going to stop, but it's not like, it's my life. Like, it's not like my life revolves around this. It's just a portion of it. So mm -hmm. it kind of just depends on where that goes. I hope that one day when I do have the chance to have a more mature conversation with them, that I can explain to them about how it's actually benefited my husband and I's relationship because now we are so open and honest with each other. I mean, if you can share something like that with somebody I mean you can pretty much share anything with them I feel like and with having that type of dynamic and that type of honesty and transparency in a relationship it really has brought a whole new meaning to what our love for each other is and I hope I can convey that message to them one day if if it comes up or if they feel comfortable talking about it. I definitely wouldn't want to have a conversation with them that they're not going to be comfortable having. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying and that like, that's what I had kind of worded before, uh, that you have to be in a great place with your partner to be able to even indulge in these types of things. So, I mean, there is something to be said for that. Um, super fucked up with ha what happened. Like we're had, like got around to the town. That is a, that's an interesting, you know, predicament that you found yourself in. But, um, yeah, I mean, this is an incredibly interesting to hear about. Um, I honestly didn't know that these two things existed, the vixen and stag sort of thing. Um, so yeah, anytime we were able to learn about a brand new thing on the show, really appreciate it. And yeah, just want to thank you for coming on and, and having this conversation with us and being honest. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's why I did want to come on and kind of talk about it, because like we kind of mentioned, it does get confused with cuckolding a lot. And not that I am saying anything's bad about that relationship. But when people try to assume what's going on with us, they think that that's what it is. And it's like, no, I have mm -hmm. no in, like desire to humiliate or degrade him. And there's nothing wrong with his performance. Like he is absolutely amazing. This is just an extension of our sex life. And there's nothing wrong with what it was before. This is just built it to be stronger. Definitely. Well, like Joe said, thank you so much for shedding light on that. Um, not something that we had come across before. And I don't think we would have totally understood those differences either. So thank you for, you know, sharing the story. Um, and, you know, thank you to your husband for being on too. I think this might be the first couple who uh, have both been on the show. We got to like send you a little award or something. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo! laughs> In the shape of a penis or something cool. Custom. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> it might not be used for just displaying. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank oh, you so God. much. And, um, you know, good luck with everything. Thanks. You guys have a good rest of your day. All right. You too. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I have to be honest, I kind of hate shopping for sneakers because it's hard to find ones that are as good or as comfortable as the ones that I already have. But Vessi has been a game changer for me. I recently discovered Vessi sneakers and they have been amazing, especially in the cold New York months. It's wet, rainy, and that's because Vessi's are 100% waterproof, 
not water resistant, but 100% waterproof. So I can wear sneakers and they never get cold and soggy and gross, which is the worst feeling on your feet. And they're super comfortable and breathable. And honestly, people keep asking me what sneakers they are. I've definitely gotten at least like three friends to already get pairs for themselves. And I love being able to still wear sneakers despite the weather outside. And they even keep your feet cool when it's hot out. So literally they're the perfect everyday shoe for whatever the weather conditions are outside and they have tons of styles to choose from so you can check them out vessies have honestly become my day-to-day -day shoe they're my go-to in any weather they're super comfortable and they're stylish so check them out at vessie.com slash opl grab yourself a pair of vessie shoes that is vessie.com slash opl I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I'm like, why did he say that? <laughs> the penis thing. Um, well, uh, super interesting episode. Uh, yeah, uh, you know. That, I mean, that took a turn with the, that, that kid dynamic is very yeah. interesting, very hard to deal with, I imagine. And just, yeah. wow. That, that would be a toughie. I mean, for me, I if I, like... Personally, like my parents never talk to me about sex ever. Right. So I don't have that relationship with my parents. Like it's like, oh, we just like pretend it doesn't happen or, you know, like, you know, like it's, it's, which I don't think that's probably the best way. I think there's a happy medium. Uh -huh. I, mean, I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know that at 12, I would be, I would be able to be like mature enough to be like, oh, you know, you should do be your independent woman. Ma. Like, I, I don't know. I, you know. Yeah, it's, I, I guess it's tough. It's tough to ask a kid to understand that for sure. And Yeah, it's a toughie. Um, I do wonder, like, it just makes me think, there has to, obviously, I don't know the stats here, but there has to have been a boom in sex work just with OnlyFans alone, right? Wh like, what? Yeah. Obviously. So I wonder if there is a point in the future and when that would be where it, I don't think it would ever be totally not taboo, but where it's just way less taboo to have a parent and to like have parents that are openly having conversations with their kid about like, this is how I financially support our family, or this is what I do for a living. And that's that. And sex work is work. And that's, you know, I, especially yeah. if there's a lot of, you know, only fans creators or just sex workers that are having kids are going to have that conversation. Yeah. And also, honestly, I still am a little confused about, uh, the, the, her husband's point of view of this whole thing of being, it's a dominant thing to have other men fuck your wife. Uh, that one is still kind of fuzzy to me. It's hard to understand, but I, I like guess it's I said, dominant if it's your desire, it's the intention. And, and, yeah, and then like, you impose that. Like if that is truly what's getting you off as much as like a, you know, right. everyday blowjob might get you off or something. Uh, an everyday blowjob. Just an everyday <laughs> run of the mill. Standard you know? run of the mill. A standard run uh, of the mill beach. <laughs> then yeah, I, I mean, yeah. If, if that's the thing, then I guess, you know, that, that makes sense. Which, hey, I mean, we've been doing the show long enough to know that someone's into everything, you know? Like there's something for everyone. So, uh, and that those I people mean, tend thing. to find each other. It's beautiful. Somehow, somehow it's all they a meet. love story. It's always a love story. It just always comes down to that. We it's believe beautiful. in soulmates over here because of this. So, seriously, <laughs> what are the chances? Uh, but yeah, for anyone out there that wants to uh, be on the show, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Our email is oplpodcast at gmail.com. Send us an email and we'll get back to you. Yes, and follow us on TikTok, Instagram, at OPL Podcast. And thanks for supporting another season in full swing. And uh, we'll see you next week. See you guys.